We can do this. Okay, this is gonna take years off my life, I swear to God. So during the day, Blackpool Pleasure Beach is buzzing with excitement and adrenaline. There's roller coasters literally going off all around you. But by night, something weird happens. Come and sit with me as we explore all of the paranormal mysteries and ghostly goings on of this 19th century amusement park. Hi friend, how are you doing? How is your day going? Are you staying hydrated? Are you drinking your water? I have my water right here. I can't believe it, it's finally happening. This is the first episode of my brand new YouTube channel, which I've been thinking about doing for literally years. And I finally decided this is the year to do it when I'm probably my busiest trying to plan a wedding as well, but we won't talk about that. So hi, I'm Claire and I am a lover of all things morbid, mysterious and macabre. I've spent hours and hours absolutely enthralled with ghost hunting TV shows. But you know what I love more than all of the grainy night vision footage and the EVPs? I wanna know the history behind a haunted place. Where did urban legends come from? And I especially love hearing about first-hand encounters that people have had with the paranormal. So that is what we're gonna do. That is what this YouTube channel is for. Every week, we're gonna sit down and swap ghost stories like a good old sleepover. So make sure that you subscribe because you do not wanna miss these chats. And to celebrate launching my channel, I'm going to be posting every single day for the next 30 days. So you're gonna doubly wanna subscribe because you are not gonna wanna miss any of these. Or maybe not, I don't know. We have a lot to cover. I have been deep into the research of some of these places. Like I've, I've had weird, weird nightmares after these places, so yeah. You, you're gonna wanna know what's what's happened in some of these. They're uh, pretty messed up. And where I can, I will always try and point you in the right direction of some good resources that I found during my research. So for this week, the book Haunted Blackpool by Stephen Mercer was fantastic. It had some really good stories from the Pleasure Beach of things that people have experienced in there. So definitely check that one out. I'll also leave a link in the description so that you can get your hands on it as well because it is definitely worth a read. Oh, don't kick the camera, oh my God. So for my first episode, I wanted to choose a place that I had a special connection with and I couldn't think of anywhere better than Blackpool because it is where I spent a lot of my childhood. We went to Blackpool pretty much every year. Like we would go see the illuminations and go up to the tower and obviously go to the Pleasure Beach. So if you're not familiar with Blackpool. Um, it's a town in the northwest of the UK uh, and it's been a really popular and much loved holiday destination ever since like the 18th century. Back then people believed that the sea air would cure many ills. So it wasn't uncommon for well-to-do families to take a trip to Blackpool to try and cure their illnesses and that led to a lot of hotels popping up along the seafront to cater to these families. And ever since then its popularity continued to grow and it absolutely boomed in 1846 when the first railway opened, which opened up the opportunity for people from all over the country to come to Blackpool to try and cure themselves. So you'd think that a town with that much history would have a lot of paranormal activity and uh, you'd be right. From the Carlton Cemetery to the Foxhall and even the North Pier and Blackpool Tower itself, there are so many ghost stories connected with this town that I'll definitely be revisiting Blackpool in a later episode. So if you have any ghost stories from the town or any interesting bits from history, please let me know in the comments. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on one specific but pretty significant area, and that is the Pleasure Beach. And I know what you're thinking, like, it's an amusement park, like it's a haunted, what? I thought the same thing until I started doing the research and realized that most haunted had been there and there was just so much about this place that is haunted. So yeah, remember Blackpool is an old town and the Pleasure Beach itself celebrated its 125th birthday in 2021. So it's a very old site. So in 1896, Alderman William George Bean returned home to the UK after failing to quote unquote, make it in New York. And seeing how popular it was becoming with tourists, he decided to get a little slice of that action. 
I mean, like all of these tourists are coming from all over the country by this point with pockets of cash. He wanted to get a slice of that. I don't blame him. So he purchased a 42 acre plot of land on the south end of the seafront. And what did he want to do with this plot of land, I hear you ask? He wanted to create an amusement park, the likes of which the UK had never seen. Like remember, he had just come back from America, like where they are huge into their theme parks. So he wanted to bring that to the UK. And his mission for this place, to make adults feel like children again and to inspire the gaiety of a primarily innocent character. So originally it just consisted of a few gypsy stalls, uh, a bicycle railway and a few roundabouts, but being envisioned the Pleasure Beach to be the UK's answer to Coney Island in the US. So he set about bringing in even more attractions to help delight his customers. And while it does just that for literally millions of people each year, like even to this day, it's a very popular destination in the UK, there is a more sinister side to the Pleasure Beach with one story originating from the first major attraction to be added to the park. So in August of 1904, the exceptionally popular Sir Hiram Maxim's captive flying machine was first opened. So alongside being the oldest continually working ride in Europe, I can confirm that it is absolutely terrifying to ride. Like, so you sit in this like little tobogganny sort of thing and it's on wires and it sort of like flings you around. And I thought that the wires were gonna snap and I was gonna go hurtling into the side of Valhalla. Like it was, it was terrifying. I was like gripping the sides, like my life depended on it. And I was not comforted by the fact that it was a hundred years old at this point. But aside from my own cowardliness, when it comes to roller coasters in general, it's the gift shop underneath that leaves even the most hardened adrenaline junkies weak in the knees. So staff members have reported seeing the spirit of a little girl. She's about nine or 10 years old and she seems to take great delight in moving things around in the shop. And we're not just talking about things that could sort of like vibrate off the shelves with like the ride going on above it. These are things that have been moved from like the shelf onto the counter, like on the other side of the room. No one knows who this little girl is, but she is said to wear old timey, sort of like old fashioned clothing. And she's been known to be active both day and night. So one of the most famous paranormal stories that is related to the Pleasure Beach is ironically enough, the ghost train. So aside from the scary scenes and the little drop thingy, like swoosh thingy in the middle, there have been some disturbing reports of an entity known to be wearing clogs appearing in the ride. And he's affectionately known as Cloggy. Staff members have heard him walking behind them once the ride has closed down, and they know that it's him because of that distinctive sound of clogs. There've also been reports of both staff and visitors hearing groans, tapping, and disembodied voices, with some getting the very strong, uneasy feeling like they're being watched. Some visitors disembark the train after riding and are very impressed with how real it feels. They especially love the parts where they get tapped on the back and the shoulders. You can imagine their absolute horror when they find out that there is nothing that is supposed to touch you on the back or shoulders. Cloggy has also been known to appear to both riders of the train and ghost hunters on occasion. So one woman was riding the train with her husband and she was not expecting it to be as scary as it was. What started out innocently enough soon turned absolutely terrifying when there was this ominous figure of a man walking straight towards their car. And so this could have been just part of the ride, right? Like there could have just been a figure walking towards them as part of the scenery. So thinking it was just an exceptionally scary part of the ride, she was expecting the carriage to like turn off or for him to like move out of the way so that the train could continue on its tracks. But that didn't happen. Much to the absolute terror of this woman, just as the carriage reached him, he faded into thin air. After the ride was over, the woman's husband noticed how, like, how pale and like shaky she was after just seeing this and started teasing her about it, which is just horrible. Like, why would you do that anyway? But she, she responded saying, oh, I wasn't expecting it to be that scary. Like, especially the part with the figure walking towards us. This guy, he responds, what figure? Only she had seen that figure walk towards them and disappear in front of their carriage. The story goes that Cloggy is a former member of staff that apparently really loved his job and keeps turning up for work even after he's passed away. That is loyalty. So if you ever take a ride on the ghost train at the Pleasure Beach, you might just see something that isn't part of the scenery. 
But those aren't the only ghosts that reside in the Pleasure Beach. Oh no. The Pleasure Beach has been home to the world famous Hot Ice Show since 1936, when it was known as the Ice Parades back then. As the Hot Ice Show is like a performative sort of ice dance, ice skating show. It's like a cabaret, it's really cool. And it takes place in the Pleasure Beach Arena, which used to be called the Ice Dome. Yeah, that's haunted as hell. And the arena itself has a, is a very creepy vibe. Um, when you walk in, it's, it's obviously very dark because it's a show, but it's just got a weird energy to it. And um, both staff and visitors have mentioned hearing the sounds of ice skaters on the ice when there isn't anyone there. Padlock doors have been found wide open and equipment seems to move like completely by itself. One of the rooms above the stage is said to be haunted by the ghost of an elderly lady. She's appeared to both members of staff and the performers themselves and she doesn't like visitors. She doesn't want people in her room. And once you leave her room, she will apparently shut the door in your face. Staff members that are closing up mention feeling a really awful presence in the arena. And there's also apparently been a fully formed apparition of a skater seen on the ice. One area manager described a man who was wearing a white shirt and black trousers out skating on the ice, like well past, well past closing time. He wouldn't look out of place during the day, just skating around. So the manager called out to the guy, like thinking he was gonna need to get security involved to get this random ice skater off the ice when the skater turned to look at him and disappeared. Maybe it was a previous performer that had returned to live their glory days on the ice. And considering it hosts one of the most famous ice skating shows in the world, it is a really creepy place. I've just been in the day and it is scary. Like it's got a really weird vibe to it. The final paranormal story that we're gonna talk about from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. The area actually no longer exists, but the activity itself is definitely worth a mention. So the Star Pub once sat on the South Promenade, like directly outside the South Gate to the Pleasure Beach. And it was built in 1931 as a replacement for the pub, the Apple and Parrot, that was built just a few yards away from the sea. It, you might wanna bring that in, away from the sea. There have been multiple reports of shadows seen in the pub with a figure resembling Karl Marx frequenting the cellar, the bar, and the living areas. So in 2016, the star was closed for good. And unfortunately in 2018, the listed building was demolished to make way for a five-star hotel. It does leave you wondering though, doesn't it? Whether the uh, Karl Marx lookalike will find his way into the new hotel. Or maybe the guests will find themselves face to face with shadow figures at three in the morning. Like we all love that, don't we? I guess we'll just have to see. Even though it's a place designed for families to have a great day out, it's fair to say that the Blackpool Pleasure Beach has more than its fair share of spooks. But what do you think? Have you ever felt anything strange and unusual about the Pleasure Beach? Or have you had a ghostly encounter somewhere else in Blackpool? Please let me know your thoughts down below because I love reading everyone's ghost stories. I don't know, it's a great day out. If you're in, if you're going to go to Blackpool, then definitely plan a day to go to the Pleasure Beach because it is full of some really fun rides. Like if that's your thing, like it's definitely worth going. But it, yeah, it definitely has a vibe to it. It's a lot more noticeable in the quieter seasons when there's less people around and maybe the weather's a little bit more miserable. That definitely feels like it's got a vibe to it. But let me know what you think. That's all from me today. Thank you so much for joining me on my first video. It's been so fun and I cannot wait to chat with you more tomorrow.